Hey YouTube, in this video, we're going to be looking at what to do if you're building a new computer and you build the whole computer, you have everything up and running, but you want to update the chipset drivers, the Wi-Fi drivers, basically all of the components on the motherboard, including the motherboard itself with its BIOS. If you want to do what's called a BIOS update, this video is going to cover where to go to get those resources. I'm surprised to learn that there's a lot of people out there that are first time builders that don't really know where to go to get that stuff or they try to do a Google search and Google leads them sometimes to the correct location, but then from there they have trouble navigating and other times it leads them to the wrong location or they end up downloading drivers for the wrong motherboard because their motherboard was, for example, an X870E Tomahawk instead of an X870 Tomahawk. And there's a difference there. One is a dual chipset, one is a single chipset. So there's things like that where it does matter. Other times, what I have seen is people will download or people will, will have a specific revision of a motherboard and they'll download updates for an older revision and it won't work. Like they won't be able to install the BIOS. It'll reject the BIOS update file so they don't understand what's going on and it's because they have the wrong revision. So we're going to cover that. Um, the easiest thing to do, so to start off, the main thing you want to do is to understand if you're on Windows, and there are ways to do this on Linux with similar places to go, but the main thing in Windows is you can pull up system information. So you type into the search system information and it'll bring up a window that looks like this that will tell you the version of the operating system. So in this case, we're running Windows 11 Pro. And then we'll also tell you the BIOS version that you're running. You wanna understand the brand of motherboard that you have. And most people that are system builders probably know that because they chose the motherboard. They probably went to like a micro center or they ordered a specific motherboard off uh, Amazon or Newegg. So in this case, we have an ASUS motherboard. This one is the ROG Crosshair X870E Hero. So that is the motherboard. So the nice thing about Windows with system information, it tells you all of this info. It tells you how much RAM you have installed. So I have physically installed 96 gigabytes of RAM. So you can get everything you need without having to download any third-party tools just from Windows itself. Just built into Windows system information gives you the info like the BIOS version, the brand of the motherboard, the actual motherboard name, and things like your RAM and how much RAM and stuff like that. So that's step one. So we know we have an ROG Crosshair X870 Hero. So now what we can do is you can go and search into Google the X870E Crosshair Hero, and that brings us to a page that looks like this. So Asus and a lot of the motherboard manufacturers follow a specific format on their motherboard websites in terms of how things are laid out. Now, at the top of the screen, they have things like products, innovation, downloads, community. So you do not want to go to downloads or support. Oftentimes, I see people, the first thing they do wrong is they either click on downloads because they're looking for like chipset drivers or a BIOS update, or they click on support up at the top. That is actually the incorrect place to go. If you're on the motherboard page itself, so in this case, this is the product page for the X870 Hero. There is a sub menu in the upper right side of the screen that you'll notice here. And the default is features. And that is the page that we're looking at here. Then there's tech specs. If we click on that, it gives us the things like the supported CPUs, the chipset name, the type of memory that's supported. So it says here it has four DIMM slots with a maximum of 256 gigabytes of DDR5. But what you want to click on is support. And this is where people get kind of lost or confused. There's actually two support buttons on the website. There's the one at the top, which you do not click. And there is the one on the upper right hand corner. If we're viewing this, on like a, a non-standard, like let's say you're looking at this on a mobile device. So mobile devices would be small like this. So instead of clicking up there in the upper left, that gives you the main menu, that's wrong. You wanna click on this little arrow on the right-hand side and scroll down to where it says support. So that's how you'd access it if you were on a mobile device or on a device where the resolution is really low. So you wanna click on this support button and this support button will bring us to the correct place. Here you'll notice 
that now we have a submenu for CPU and memory support. So this shows all the CPUs and all the memory that is supported, that is officially tested by ASUS to work with this motherboard. This area that we're looking at right now where it says memory and then all these different memory SKUs, this is known as the qualified vendor list or the QVL list. So if you, meaning, if you have this motherboard and you're looking to buy RAM that you want to guarantee works with this motherboard, you can select motherboard memory from this table for this motherboard. It's also sorted by the CPU generation. So for example, if you have a Ryzen 9, 9950X or X3D or something, you'd want to make sure you select the 9000 series. That's going to filter to all the different memory SKUs. You can search by the brand of memory, like G-Skill, I just saw G-Skill there, Corsair, Crucial, all of them. So the size as well, and whether it's Expo or XMP, or it has both profiles in the SPD, and then, of course, the RAM speed, so it looks like 9,000 is the maximum. But that is where you go to find the QVL list. The second thing here is drivers and tools. This is probably the location where most people are trying to find, but they're having trouble finding it. So the driver and tools, driver and tools, select the operating system. In this case, we're on Windows 11, 64. And here we have all of the latest drivers, as well as older versions for a given category. If you do a show all, for instance, we can see all these different LAN drives. This is for the Ethernet port on those on this motherboard. And then, of course, the wireless driver, chipset driver, audio, the integrated graphics, USB driver, etc., Bluetooth, all that stuff. So this is where you go to basically make it so that the device manager is no longer complaining about unknown device or you know, it, it, it's where you go to update all the drivers if you're doing them manually. The other one is going to be BIOS and firmware. So BIOS and firmware is where you go to download the BIOS update. And it gives you some vague notes as to what this new BIOS does. In general, you want to be on the latest BIOS. Oftentimes, when people, I, I read comments on some of my memory videos and people are always saying like, well, how come it's not working for me? Or... And usually it's because they're on an outdated BIOS. They're on one from like two years ago or last year or whatever, especially if you're on B650. So you guys can see, even though this is X870E and it's not even a year old, the platform will be a year old in September, you can see how many BIOS updates since September 23rd of last year was the first release and then goes all the way to June of this year. So there's a lot of fixes, lots of, for example, memory training. Memory training used to take so long if you had four sticks of memory, even if you had single rank four sticks of memory on an ASUS motherboard. The later BIOSes from May and June of this year have addressed that. So now memory training is way faster. We're talking like orders of magnitude faster with these newer BIOSes. So that is one example of why you want to be on the latest BIOS because that gives you, generally speaking, it gives you the best performance. It has a lot of bug fixes. It has security vulnerability fixes, like CVE fixes and all kinds of things. So there's there's no reason not to be on the latest BIOS unless you are not experiencing any significant problem. But even if you're not experiencing any problems, best practice is to be on the latest official BIOS, not necessarily a beta BIOS. And ASUS does a good job of labeling whether or not they have a beta BIOS. So this is a beta BIOS here. They have it, it says it right there. So the ones that do not say beta are official BIOSes. So those are the recommended ones. So that covers ASUS. The last thing is we want to show the manual. So if you want to look at the manual, a lot of people are wondering like, well, how do you know uh, if you install something in the second PCIe slot, is my graphics card going to lose lanes? That's a huge thing that a lot of people always ask about. Well, if you have a specific motherboard, you can just go look in the manual and it will tell you all you need to know. So not only does ASUS have the motherboard manual, the user manual, they also have the BIOS manual. Now you want to look, if you're trying to learn how the BIOS works, you can look at the BIOS menu 
The BIOS menu is going to give you all the info you need to know about, it's basically documentation for how to use their BIOS and every single motherboard vendor does this. So that's the BIOS manual. But if you wanna look at the actual user's manual, so the user's manual is where you go if you want to see things like, for instance, max supported OC speeds for RAM, PCIe slot layout, USB four ports, all that kind of stuff, whether or not it has a Thunderbolt add-in header, those sort of details will be in this manual. So it also gives you the labels. It also tells you things like, for example, this table here is telling us how lane sharing works on this motherboard because there's lane sharing. So it's very important to be familiar with how to access this info officially and not be led down from like wrong search engine results or things like that. So that covers ASUS. So what about if I have an ASRock motherboard? So the process is very similar. You just go to the ASRock page for the given motherboard that you have. In this case, we're looking at an X870E Tai Chi. Now ASRock is different from ASUS. So ASRock, just like ASUS, has that main menu at the top, which we are not going to use. We're just going to ignore that completely. ASRock doesn't put the submenu at the top. You have to actually scroll down a little bit. And then here is their submenu where they have overview, they have the specification table, they have the gallery, and oh, I don't like how they, uh, they did that. And then they have the support page where you click on support and here is the menu where you can download all of the drivers for the components on the board. And they always update it to the latest one, but one thing I don't like about what they do here, and I just now noticed this, is they only show you the latest available drivers. Meaning, let's say you update to the latest driver and there's some kind of incompatibility bug or problem with that driver and some peripheral that you're using. There is no way to roll back or there's no way to download the older driver from their website, unlike Asus, which did a good job of giving me the option to pull or like show all the older ones. I like that Asus doesn't remove them from the website, unlike ASRock, so that is not good that ASRock does that, as in my opinion. BIOS updates, you click on BIOS. Now, thankfully, ASRock does keep older BIOSes, so you can still do like a rollback if you need to. But in general, you wanna be on the latest BIOS. You can see the latest one is version 3.30 at time of filming. And then the manual is the same thing. You can access the manual from the documentation page and it's very similar to ASUS at that point. They also have the BIOS manual as well. Pretty much all the vendors follow a similar format in terms of their documentation and where to go. You just have to know how to navigate their website. It's, it's, in fact, navigating the website is literally like 70% of the challenge for a lot of these things, just looking for these things. And then supported memory QVL list. If we have a 9000X3D, for example, here are all the different memory options that you can go with that are guaranteed to work because this means that ASRock tested these memory kits in their own lab and they verify that they work at the rated speeds. So that covers ASRock. What about MSI? So MSI, we're looking at the X870 Godlike here. So very similar to ASUS, they have their top menu that is we're going to ignore. Then they have the submenu in the upper right. So you have the overview, the specifications, so all this stuff. The nice about MSI, the data sheet is highlighted there. So if you want to download the data sheet, you can do that. And then the support page is where you would go. So remember, it's always that submenu support, not the main one at the top. And then it defaults to the BIOS page, which is interesting. They default to BIOS. And you can see here's the latest BIOS. There's some older ones. They've got all the older ones. And then you have the drivers. They automatically default to Windows 11. And they kind of break it up into these button categories. So you have the chipset. You have the integrated graphics. The LAN. So you have both the, the physical LAN, the 10 gig LAN, and the wireless Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So basically all four of these. So this one is Bluetooth, this one is Wi-Fi 7, this one is the 5 gig LAN from Realtek, and this is the Marvell 10 gig LAN on the back, because remember it's dual LAN on this motherboard. And then audio drivers, etc. Uh, and then that pretty much covers the drivers, download, and then manual, it has its own 
section here if you want to see the manual for MSI. Just click on download and there you go. So they've got all the info on like how to install and MSI does a good job with having like a what I call like a quick start guide where there's no explanation. They just kind of show you visually and then they have like a QR code or URL if you want to see a video of how to do what they're showing. So they've got some good documentation in that regard. And they also, I like how they give you this table to indicate how to install four sticks of RAM like or one stick of RAM or two sticks of RAM. So that's MSI's. And then finally, the compatibility button is where you go to view the memory QVL list right here. So they have all of that same, same deal. Like the others, you just sort by the type of CPU. So in this case, 9,000, 7,000, and then the 8,000 series, like the 8700G. So that's MSI. And then finally, we come to Gigabyte. Gigabyte, very similar to Asus and MSI. They have the main menu at the top, and they have the sub menu on the upper right hand side. And then you would click on support. It defaults to the download tab. And you can see now they're a little bit different in how they format or how they lay out this stuff. So BIOS updates are going to be on the BIOS button, and then the latest one's going to be at the top. So you can see it's like that. Now, Gigabyte, if you're downloading a beta BIOS, it will have a lowercase letter next to the BIOS. So it'll be like F7B. F7B means it is a beta BIOS because it has a lowercase b. F6 is an official BIOS. F5A is a beta BIOS because it has that lowercase letter next to it. So that's how to read the names of the Gigabyte BIOSes and know if you're downloading an official one or a beta one. So the latest one from Gigabyte is a beta BIOS from June 23rd, so last month. So that is Gigabyte's and the drivers, same deal. You have audio, you have chipset, you have LAN, etc. So all that's there. They do some older ones, so they don't just erase all the older drivers, which is good. And then you have CPU support, and then the manual. So you have the QVL list. And it's a pretty detailed table in terms of it shows you all the timing, primary timings, the voltages, Memory socket support, meaning one DIMM was tested, two DIMM was tested, four DIMM was not tested. So if you want to sort by capacity or module, supplier, speed, all that stuff, CPU series, it's all here. And then the manual is going to be pretty straightforward, the same as the others. You just click on the manual, and then you have access to things like the block diagram and the motherboard layout. Finally, let's look at Biostar, because Biostar, you don't see them much, but they do have their own way of doing things. So they have the main menu at the top. They do not have the submenu at the upper right. It's more like ASRock, where they have this menu down here, and you click on Download. And then here's where you can download the manual. And then the BIOS is second category, the chipset, the integrated, all the stuff is like in one place. Now, the one thing, what if I want to see the memory support? So you have memory support here, and there is the memory support table. It doesn't look like there's a way. You can export it, so that's good. You can actually export the entire list because they don't have a very good sub-menu system to search for a specific memory SKU. So at least they let you export the entire list, so that's nice. And that pretty much covers all of them. So hopefully you guys found this video useful in terms of how to find the resources you need. Like if you're doing a BIOS update, you want to understand lane sharing, limitations, features of the motherboard. That is how to navigate. So let me know your comments in the section below if you're doing a PC build. I'm curious to know what motherboard you're going with, what CPU, memory, etc. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.